Repentance leads to Christ-like character. The sin of claiming to belong to our Lord Jesus without having a burden for the lost. Part 1. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, as you're going, make disciples of all nations. God has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. Have you noticed that so few gospel presentations today point to the utter depravity of humanity? Every person on earth has rebelled against our Creator. That means each of us, apart from Jesus, is eternally separated from a holy and just God. Because we've all sinned, every person on earth stands condemned to hell, apart from our covering in Christ's blood alone as payment for our sin. Is that clear to you? Jesus did on your behalf what you couldn't do for yourself. He alone was the perfect and sinless sacrifice who took the punishment you deserved. That was so you could love God and live for His purposes, doing the will of our Father. And one of the most important responsibilities entrusted to you is to be our Lord's ambassador reaching out to disciple the lost. Wholeheartedly loving our Father and doing His will is the response of someone who's authentically grasped the significance of the cross. Your love for the one who's shown you such love is evidenced by the presence of His indwelling Spirit. When you're led by the Spirit of love, you desperately want others to know that Jesus alone can deliver them from sin's hellish consequence. Your testimonies bring to life His power and His love for those who have ears to hear, those who ask for the reason, for the wonderful hope you have in Christ as Lord of your life. These are the biblical distinctions by which you must test yourself to see if you really are in Christ. Do you truly understand why Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you recognize in your heart your sinful condition in the sight of God from the day you were born until you were born again? Is your own heart readily moved to tell people you know about what Jesus has done and will do for them if they wholeheartedly repent and turn to Him in obedient trust? If that last question seems foreign to you, or if you're reluctant to gratefully serve as Christ's ambassador, then it's very possible you receive the false gospel. That means you're outside his kingdom looking in, because his spirit isn't abiding in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Don't take this lightly. If you don't delight in being a vessel through whom our Father makes his appeal to the lost, then you need to revisit His Word. You've missed something essential in both your understanding of your own sin nature and of what Jesus did so that you might be saved from the punishment your sins deserve. In the 1980s, while I was counseling church leaders, one group came to me for guidance. They'd given their congregation a spiritual gift survey to help both the individuals and the leadership discover their gifting. The problem was they distributed the survey over three weeks earlier and fewer than 20% of the people had turned it back in. No matter how much they were reminded, no one else responded. I recommended they take the membership role of their congregation and prayerfully put an X next to the names of any whose salvation the leaders had doubts. What a surprise as the leaders discovered they doubted the authenticity of faith in 80% of the people. 
And these were the very ones who hadn't filled out the spiritual gift survey. I asked, How can people who don't have the Spirit of Jesus abiding in them fill out a questionnaire about a spiritual anointing they don't have? This same principle holds true for people who call themselves Christian but aren't burdened for those who have yet to trust in Jesus. If you have experienced spiritual rebirth, His Spirit does abide in you, and He wants to use you as an ambassador and a discipler. From a scriptural standpoint of love-grounded obedience to your Lord, this isn't optional. Rather, it's a loving responsibility and privilege filled with joy. If you shrink away from testifying of Jesus and coming alongside to disciple people in His ways, you're sinning. Your shame to be known as a Jesus follower is like disowning Him before others, and that denial carries a heavy cost. Whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in Heaven. If this describes you, please repent. Earnestly ask His Spirit for opportunities to bear witness of His working and His love and be willing to disciple those He brings to you for that express purpose. The Relational Nature of True Discipleship Let's look at the relational context of discipleship cited by Paul with those he came alongside to train in Thessalonica. Listen to the phrases that make plain his intimate relationship with them and how that love was enacted. His ways are a great pattern for each of us in discipling. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. Brothers loved by God. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Because you had become so dear to us. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God. There's a wealth of meat in these passages for us today to digest in our own discipling relationships. Paul's relational intimacy with these followers of Jesus confirms his confidence that his discipling has been effective among them. And think about the relational commitment between Jesus and His disciples, which is the foundation of true discipleship. When Paul discipled Jesus' followers in the various areas he journeyed to, he spent meaningful and substantial time with the members of each faith community. In this way, he was also role modeling for Timothy, Titus, Silas, and the others the importance of personally caring for those they were training to grow in Christ's character. They were setting a relational pattern for subsequent generations in the faith who then disciple others. Your own love-grounded walk with Jesus as your Lord is on the line as an example for those you're discipling. Anything else would be hypocrisy. Paul proclaimed the essential value of role modeling what you teach. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. If you belong to Jesus, you have His sanctifying Spirit within you to proclaim truth and love. You have experiences to share about how He's changed you since He chose you out of the world's ways into kingdom living. You have testimonies of spiritual power encounters and divine intervention in your time of need that only God could do. You have biblical applications to discuss that have molded your character as you've loved Jesus and walked in obedient trust. These are powerful testimonies you've experienced which point to the all-sufficiency of our Lord, to His absolute faithfulness to keep His promises, and to the unfailing wisdom 
of God's Word. No one can take these away from you. And what an amazing wonder that He's chosen you with all your shortcomings and perceived inadequacies to house the Spirit of Christ. So remember this encouragement. We do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. When you get hold of that, you'll want to fall on your knees in humble adoration before Him. 